Today on the show, Funny Man Dan talks about Christopher Robin, the new movie. That's right. Today's episode's all about poo. Winnie the Pooh. Oh. Let's revisit our childhood on I Wish I Was Eight Again. Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Funny Man Dan the Poo. Okay, Funny Man the Poo? Funny Man... No, just Funny... Funny. It's Winnie the Pooh. I don't know what a poo is, but it seems like... It's wow. gonna, it seems awesome. I think we're really going to find out what it is. Mm. We are both grown-ups, but we're both young at heart. And that's mm. why we do this show. Every single week, Funny Man Dan takes a look at something amazing, mm. something incredible, something fun, and he decides if he would have wanted it when he was eight. Yes. Which was a very long time ago. And all I wanted when I was eight was poo. Really? I really like that bear. I okay. Let's let's start off with this. I had a Winnie the Pooh bear, uh, mm -hmm. but it was not bought from a shop. It was not purchased from a toy uh, vendor. Ooh, a homemade poo. A homemade poo. I had a homemade poo by my auntie who made me a poo. Yes. Uh, well, let's call it a Winnie. It feels a bit weird. I had a homemade Winnie. For those of you who are watching this in America, right? And from a, a poo in Australia is the word for poop. So it was a little bit weird you really, growing up. You really no, need to explain that. I don't think they know that. Oh my gosh. No, poo, they think of poo. So my favourite thing when someone have a Winnie the Pooh top, you say, oh, you've got some poo on your top. Oh, is, that a, is that your best joke? It yeah, was at the it. time. It was at the time. It's right. sa same at the dinner table. You can get a little pee and you can throw it on someone's lap and say, you peed your pants. You peed your pants. Yeah, right. It's quite, and that really was where Funny Man Dan came from. Yes. Because yes. everybody loved it back then. Mm. And I'm sure they still love it now. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the movie today. It's all about Christopher Robin. Who is Christopher Robin, Dan? Well, uh, he's Ewan McGregor. Right, in real life, the actor Ewan McGregor plays Christopher Robin. But who is he in the movie? Oh, so in the movie, yes. there was a kid yes. who used to go through a magic... What was his name? Christopher Robin. Right. He used to go through a magical uh, tree, tree, tree hole, tree. I, feel, I think he just went to the Hundred Acre Woods. And he went to the Hundred Acre Woods. Yeah. And there was a magical place where Winnie the Pooh lived. Yes. Uh, Tigger lived. Yes. Piglet lived. Yes. Owl. Eeyore. Rabbit. 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 <laughs> Rabbit's brother, Rabbit. Yep. Kanga. Joey. What was uh, what was, what was Kanga. the kangaroo? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kanga. Kanga and Joey, I believe. I used to read these books uh, when I was a kid. Mm. Uh, I think I've watched lots of cartoons. There was a Tigger movie a few years ago. Uh, but this movie, I have not seen the movie, but we're happy to report that Funny Man Dan has seen the movie. Yes, I saw it uh, yesterday. And based on your recommendation today, based on your rating, is going to decide if I get to go and see it as well. Because mm. maybe it's not worth it. Maybe. Or maybe it is. Maybe. Ooh. Oh, he's maybe, it's, uh, maybe, maybe it's so amazing that the Knocking your movie DVD. down. Yeah. Speaking of amazing movies, all right, let's talk about this. Um, let's talk about this. This this movie, Dan. It was. Uh, it's it's made a lot of money. It's done really well at the at the cinemas. Ooh. It's got lots of positive reviews from critics. Uh, it's coming out. It came out in thirteenth uh, of September, which is right about now. And so it's out new in Australia. Although it may not be new where you're from, because in Australia we take a long time to get movies. Sometimes, sometimes they take ages. Like the Minion movie came out. Three or four months after the rest of the world. No, 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 no. No? The Minion movie came out in Australia three or four months out before. See, we got the Minion movie before everybody else. Yes, but usually it's the Usually other the other way around. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's talk about the movie before we get into rating it, Dan. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I want to set this up for you because, sure, it's easy to rate a movie. Yeah. There are millions of people out there. So who, many. So many that just go, the movie gets a... A 29 out of 40, or a A+. Plus. The, uh, yeah. the cinematography and yeah. the, uh, the lighting yeah. and the yeah. thing is yeah. all, yeah. all, all wrong! So there are I lots of people who can give you a review. Mm. But we're talking about I Wish I Was 8 Again. Yes. So let's talk about a movie that came out when you were about 8. Okay. The movie is Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Oh, yes! Do you remember that movie? I do. Rick Moranis? Yes, Rick he, Moranis. He shrunk the kids. He did shrunk the kids. And then he told his honey. <laughs> no, he, he did you? tell his honey. Now, this movie was speaking, a big hit. Speaking of honey. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Okay. I remember this movie very well. I, I All of them, all of the kids at my school watched the movie, and it was on TV for years, it seemed like. Every year, I'd end up watching the movie. It was a great movie. Was so, great I movie. want to set that up as the benchmark. Okay. Like, that was one of a great movie. When you were eight, you watched. You loved it. All right? So when you're thinking about scoring this one, mm. this is not your average everyday review. I want you to compare it with Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Can you do that, Dan? I can, honey. All right. So let me tell you about the movie. Well, Moda, you tell me about the movie. Tell me about the storyline. Okay. Good effects, 
All this, like, give us some, give us some basic thoughts. Well, there was no star fights and no. CGI battles, but there has to be like computer graphics because it's well, about this, toys that come to this life. This was amazing. Right. Okay, so it's all about Christopher Robin. It yep. starts in the Hundred, Hundred Acre Woods. Yes, and so two of the characters are CGI Owl and, mm-hmm. oh, and and Kanga in there, but the other ones are literally they look like toys, but they move and they talk. And it's amazing. I it's see. incredible. So later on, when Christopher Robin grows up, yes. they travel to the real the world, real world, and interact with Christopher Robin. All grown up. He's a serious amazing. Christopher Robin. Oh, he's lost the ability to play. Oh, he's I all see. about work. He's 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 become a grown up. Yes. No, we don't really oh. like grown ups. Ugh, boring. Grown ups are boring. <sighs> boring. But this movie, I guess, I'm going to find out because I haven't seen it yet. Maybe he recovers. His childhood. Well, it was all about the uh, all about his childhood visiting his. Speaking of childhood, I think you've just got to. You know what? Let's just. Let's... All right, all right. So, uh, what we're going to do right now is cut to a scene from the movie, and then we're going to come back, and Dan is going to give it his best shot. Oh. Oh. What to do? What to do? What to do? What to do, indeed. Who? Christopher Robin. No! No, 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 no. You you can't be here. (laughs) This can't be happening. Oh, God, it's stress. It's not stress. God, I'm stressed. It's poo. So exhausted. Evelyn warned me. I like to be warmed. Warmed. And cozy. I've cracked. I've totally cracked. I don't see any cracks. A few wrinkles, maybe. We are about to get a score out of 100. If it gets at least a 65, it'll be pronounced Dantastic. If it gets something over 90, it becomes Epic Dantastic. If it's under 65, it's a Fail. And if it's under 30, it's an DVD that keeps on falling over. All right. An epic fail. <laughs> An epic fail. There are five categories worth 20 points each. Playability, fun. Is it fun? Yes. Popularity. Is it cool? Practicality. Will it fit? Probability. Will mum buy it? And pertinacity. Will it end up in poo? <laughs> oh, well, there we go. Pertinacity is a fancy word that we just discovered that means, will it last? Will you get bored of it? Will it break? All right. It's kind of like the durability of something. Okay. Whew. Playability, Dan. Was this fun? This it's, movie. Yes, it's a very fun movie. Seeing oh. toys come to life oh. in, a, in a different way. Like it's, it looks very, very different. Um, it's voiced by the original Winnie the Pooh. Guy. So the Winnie Pooh voice. I think so because it sounded exactly. <laughs> it sounded exactly. You know, let's just leave it. Okay. Just look over here. Calm down. It sounded exactly like it. Give me a which score. Which is awesome. I'm going to say it's an 18. 18 out of so 20. Much fun. All right. Great now, energy. we do need to be keeping track of these. Our computers, you know, because the beep boop boop needs to happen, right? Mm-hmm. So, 18 mm-hmm. for playability. Yeah. All right. Popularity. Is it cool? Ooh. Like, are, are all the kids into it? All the kids are still into poo. Right. I'm not sure about this. It's not going to be as big as like a Marvel right. movie. I wish it was. Um, I'd much rather see a poo than a Marvel. Right. Um, but it's it's still... I still think Winnie the Pooh is pretty big with, with cool. eight-year-olds. Right. There's been a lot of shows on the Disney Channel. Okay. Uh, there's Super so Sleuths. Been out there. And, yeah, it's Super Sleuths. You can't even say the word. Super Sleuths. Super Sleuths. Yeah, they right, do. Give me a score. That. I'm going to give 15. 15... <laughs> 18 and a 15. All right, we're getting on with this practicality. Will it fit in your life? Is this going to be a movie that sucks your life away? Like you have to see it every single day and you, you obsess about it? Or will you enjoy it and move on with your life? No, it's a good movie. It's a standalone movie. They're right. not going to make hundreds right. more It's of not this. going to be Christopher Robin It's too. not going to be the Christopher Robin cin- cinematic universe. Give me a score. I'm going to give it an 18. Probability. Will mum let you go see this movie? Look, I think 100%. Give us a score. 20. Easy one. That's the easiest you've ever scored anything. Yeah, easy, easy. All right, pertinacity. Will this movie stand the test of time? Will you watch it in 10 years' time, Funny Man Dan, when you are old and older? And will you go, oh, that was a terrible movie? To stand the test of time in movies, you need a really good message. And this right. message is all about not growing old, 
right? Um, remembering who you are and right. having fun and enjoying life. Well, they said having fun is exactly what Funny Man Dan is all exactly. about. Exactly. They said sometimes doing nothing leads to the very best of something. Sometimes doing nothing, nothing leads to the, the very best of something. something. Amazing. So Give us a score. 17. 17. Oh, well, I feel like this is a pretty highly scored... Yeah, it was a good uh, movie. Good movie here. Do you recommend it for me to see it? Would you yes, say? Yes, I think you should. Okay. I reckon this is a good movie you could go with your parents. Amazing. Oh, that's a good idea. All right, yeah. let's get those computers computing. Beep, boop, 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 boop. 88. 88, 88 ladies and gentlemen. That makes it... Dantastic. Not quite epic Dantastic. No, but very close. Very, very close. Actually, it's extremely close. I wonder how this compares to the other movies that were reviewed in the past. I think that beat Infinity War. It might have been Infinity War. Well done. Now, the ultimate question for you, though, Funny Man Dan, is this. Hmm. If you were eight again, would you have wanted to see Christopher Robin? Yes. Oh, easy answer, easy answer. Well, make sure you like and subscribe. And go see Christopher Robin at the cinemas. Or if it's you're watching this movie later on, you get it on the iTunes or the DVD. Or the DVD. Or the DVD. Uh, but now it's time for a brand new segment we're calling Can You Believe It? This segment is called Can You Believe It? Funny Man Dan is going to tell me a story that supposedly happened to him when he was eight. Mm. Now, I then get 30 seconds to question him. At the end of those 30 seconds, I have to decide whether the true story that he told me is really true, like Winnie the Pooh true, or it's a big lying steaming pile of Eeyore. Steaming pile yeah, of Eeyore. Yeah, I tried to work in I'm Winnie the Pooh. Glad you didn't say it didn't work. Steaming pile. Stop it. So, Dan is about to start the story. Dan, please tell me your supposedly true story. Here's the facts, David. Okay, go. When I was eight, yes. I once projectile vomited <laughs> right. over a meter through an open door. It's like three feet through an open door. Through an open door? <laughs> okay. Where were you? Uh, I was at a camp. A camp? Yep. Uh, where was the location? Uh, it was a camp. school camp yes. in Olverston, Tasmania. Okay, great. Camp Clayton. Uh, and what did you eat that made you throw up? Uh, corn. Lots of little corn. Very mushy oh, wait, 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 wait. corn. Corn on a cob? Corn on a cob. So you're yep. eating, how many did you have? Five. Five corn on the cobs. Okay, did you notice anything strange about the corn? It was extra squishy corn. Right. At what point did you go, maybe I should stop eating these? No, uh, well, so what we're doing, we're in a, a dance. Yeah. Like it was a it was a group, it was a snake dance. Okay, that's all the and questions I get. And then as I'm snaking, dancing, yes, yes. I'm like, oh my goodness. Right. And then I started to run. And I got to the door. Okay. But I didn't get out the door, the door. And so I... And the whole thing left my oh, mouth gross. and then right. landed just through the door into the in the doorway. Okay, outside. just the question. It, it made it outside of the room though, right? It did not oh. land. Not a speck of oh, vomit amazing. landed in the room. So now is the time for me to decide whether that was a true story or not. Now, as I said before, I know that Dan is particularly uh, skillful at throwing up. Uh, I wouldn't <laughs> say it's a skill, but it does happen. Yes, I've thrown up many uh, times. <laughs> many, many times before. Uh, me, on the other hand, I do not like throwing up or try everything in my power to, to not because it's like the worst feeling in the world. I don't know about you, but I don't like the feeling. The question is, did Dan throw up at a camp when he was eight, doing the worm dance? A snake dance. <laughs> snake dance. It was okay. like a group activity. This was my, my all everyone was there. Okay, listen, don't need to pretend anymore. I don't think. Well, here's the thing. I'm gonna go. Yes, that happened, funny man Dan. Can I believe it? Yes, I can. Did it happen? Yes, it was a it. true story. I've got Directly a feeling. Directly out the door. <laughs> I've got a feeling we may be doing a few more of these in the future. <laughs> My teacher was literally outside the door and it landed at her oh, feet. Oh, <laughs> gross. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing. It's been a great day. I'm going to go watch a movie. I'm not going to eat mushy corn. And we're going to see you next time on I Wish I Was Eight Again. Have fun. And as always. And as always. Do I need to say that? No. Okay. This is fun. It was good. You want to say it always? What well, don't we usually do is... Don't, well, no, that's for the other show. I was in my brain. I was like, oh, you're What other show? show? In 1881, there were only six men in Britain called Derek. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great fact. <laughs>